something a little different. I'm going to do a uh, comparison and review between two of my favorite cameras. One, I have my Toyo uh, 4.5 uh, CF, uh, rather modern design. Let's see if I can snap that. Snap that in there. Okay, so I've got my 4x5 Nagaoka, and to me, these cameras represent over a century of change in the world of photography. I mean, the Nagaoka is wood and metal and leather, and the, the Toyo is literally space age materials. And the only thing material wise they really have in common, they both have a ground glass uh, you know, view screen on the back. Now, when you first look at these, you're going to think, wow, that, that Nagaoka is so much smaller than the Toyo. Well, kind of. Really, footprint wise, they're both about 180 by 200 millimeters uh, for a footprint. The thickness, obviously, you can see is different. This is about 100 millimeters thick on the Toyo. And depending on where you measure on the Nagaoka, it's probably about 70 millimeters thick. As far as weight goes, the Nagaoka was weighing in at 1.1, some, uh, about 1.1, 1 1.2 1 uh, kilograms. It puts it about two and a half pounds. Toyo weighs in at about 1.6 kilograms, three and a half, 3.6 pounds. It's about a pound heavier than the Nagaoka. Now, frankly, to me, let's see if I can get that lined up in there. Um, frankly, to me, that one pound difference in weight is insignificant, and the size difference is insignificant. Now, if you're one of those guys who goes on, you know, four-day backpacking trips and, you know, you cut the, the handle off your toothbrush to save that half an ounce, then maybe that's more important to you. Um, but I really don't think the size or the weight is, should be the deciding factor on which camera you ought to get. So, let's open them up, the, the, and I'll get into what I think the deciding factor is a little later. Um, this, you just slide the back open. A little tricky to do this backwards, but this bottom flips, or the front standard flips over, flips under. You get it underneath, you raise it up just a little bit, and you can lock it in place. And then at that point, you're ready to install a lens. Now it uses the standard um, lens boards. I think they're 96 by 98, very common. And that just slides into place and you're ready to go. Now, the Toyo, I'm gonna to rotate these knobs, um, the bottom of the knob forward, so the whole camera will set up, lock into place. I then rotate that bed back, pop that locking lever, and just pull that forward. Now, this has a 210 millimeter lens on it. There's a scale here. I'm just gonna pull that out to about 210 and lock it in place. Anyway, so once you have a camera set up, you've got a lens on it, um, you know, they look fairly similar. Um, both of them have a rotating back, two levers you, or knobs up here that you pop off and you can rotate the back. Same here, slide these out, back comes off, and you rotate it, and you lock it back down. Now, after that, things get a little different. Um, the biggest advantage of the Nagaoka is the back will give you some movement. You can get some swing by loosening these um, two uh, knobs and you can push one side forward or the other side forward and get back swing. You can also loosen these and you can tilt it back and you can tilt it forward. So you have back movements here. You really don't have back movements on the Toyo. Again, to me that's not a big deal. I very, very seldom have ever needed them. As far as the front movements go, um, you know, it's got your standard tilt for forward, and then you can tilt it back. You got plenty more tilt and, uh, and rise than I usually ever need. You can also, to get um, swing, you loosen these four knobs, and then you do the same thing where you just kind of warp the front standard forward and back, and you can get your swing in there. The Toyo. I think has a little more sophisticated system in that you just pop that lever loose and now I can swing this and I also have slide or shift. I can shift the um, 
the front standard over, and of course it's got the uh, swing as well as um, th like the uh, Nagaoka had, and it's got quite a bit of rise and drop here as well. I like the knobs on here better, they, they, they're a little bit easier to grip. Um, the other thing that the, the Toyo offers is a drop bed. I can pop these back, and now I have, I can use that if I wanted to, I guess I could use that as some uh, back tilt, but it's really intended for, and I can line things up because I've got a level on top, it's intended to drop the bed and allow you to then pop the standard and then you can, and mainly with wide angle lenses, where is that, there it is, wide angle lenses, you can move the standard back and keep the bed out of the field of view. This kind of brings me to the, the distinction, at least in my opinion, as to which camera, if you're only going to have one, which one you'd probably want to go for. If you're shooting a lot of wide angle lenses, the Nagaoka is going to have a serious advantage in that you can loosen these two knobs again and you can push the whole back carriage forward halfway, halfway across the bed. And that would allow you, you can still, you, you've got the back focus knob over here, so you can still fork, you know, uh, adjust the front standard and you can use a really wide angle lens. It's a lot harder to use a really wide angle lens over here, even with the drop bed. I, I would say, in my somewhat limited experience, that the widest lens that you'd want to regularly use with the Toyo is probably around 90 millimeters. Now, I, I think they claim you can go wider than that. I haven't tried it. Uh, with the, with the uh, Nagaoka, really, you're going to be limited by bellows movement as you, you swing that thing in there. Um, that's pretty much as close as I can get. That's probably about 70 millimeters is what I would call that in there. About 70 millimeter. Um, about as tight as you can get because we're hitting the, the rails here. Now, if we want to go the other way, I'm going to slide this all the way back. I push that all the way back and lock it in. And now I'll have to use the front focus. And I'll crank that all the way out. It's, that's actually off the pinion right there. So that's basically our, our max that we've got. Over here, I'm going to pull this out. There's actually um, stops here on the carriage. So I'll pull it out to those stops. And then I'm going to crank this out as far as I dare, as far as it will let me. And there's the lock here. Over here, to lock that, you tighten that knob right there, or this one back here, if I was using the back focus knob. So, what do we have here? I'm going to go in, I'm going to call that right at, call it 300 millimeters, uh, plus or minus a little bit. And here, Let's call it 300, right at 350. So you've, you've got about 40 or 50 uh, millimeters in bellows extension on the Toyo, Toyo, which is important to me because I tend to shoot large, I'm sorry, I tend to shoot um, longer lenses, um, usually upwards of 300, 250, um, upwards of 300. So the the Toyo has a huge advantage. I really can't even shoot some of those lenses realistically. Can't really use those lenses on the Nagaoka. So, to me, that's the deciding factor between these two cameras. If you're a wide, wide angle guy, you're probably going to want to go with the Nagaoka. It's going to offer you um, a significant advantage in the wide angle world. And, and frankly, if you notice, when this thing's all the way out here, even when I lock it down, you know, it, it's, it's, not, it's not intended for big, heavy lenses. And indeed, this is one of my heavier lenses I have out here. And, um, so you may wonder, why do I have the heavier lens on the Nagaoka and I have the smaller uh, Kimura lens on my uh, Toyo? Well, 
The reason is this lens is just wide enough, and I mean within half a millimeter of clearing these um, rails so I can fold it up with the lens in the camera. And, and that, for me, it just makes things easier to set up. It protects the lens, and, and to me, that's an advantage. Over here, there's, there's no way this lens is going to fit in the uh, Toyo anyway, and there is no lens that will fit in here. Uh, maybe if you had some really special pinhole or something, I don't know. But really over here, um, you're going to have to, you're going to have to take the lens out when you fold the camera up. Another thing about the Nagaoka that I've noticed, at least on mine, in fact, almost every one of these I've seen, um, you'll notice that I see if I can tilt this down and see if you can, if we can get in there. You'll see this crack right here in the middle. Um, almost every Nagaoka I've seen has that crack, and what it, I'm sure what it is is they have this. Let me just pop this thing off. As you can see it here on the bottom as well. I don't know if that's going to focus in there. If you're going to be able to see that or not. But you've got this metal plate on the bottom that is screwed into the wood and it has split. The temperature coefficient is probably what caused it to split um, across the bottom. It doesn't affect anything and I don't worry about it. It just seems to be, like I say, almost every one of these I've seen has that crack. The other thing I've run into, you have a this back focus knob and you've got the front focus knob and sometimes the pinions, now this is still staying straight, but sometimes uh, the pinion gears from one side to the other will jump a tooth and you'll end up with things just a little cockeyed. You know it's not a big deal and I won't do it, it does it when I don't want it to, but you just have to you know push that side back in and um, re-engage it. Yeah there it's off by by a two, so I just push in and we'll get it back in. Uh, okay, to sum it up, it really comes down to personal preference. Um, like I said, if you're doing a lot of uh, wide angle work, you may want the Nagaoka. If you're doing a lot of longer lenses, heavier lenses, you may see an advantage with the Toyo. Um, price wise, the Toyo is generally a lot more expensive. It's usually between what I've seen, $800 to $1,200. The Nagaoka anywhere from five to six hundred dollars. Again, it depends on the condition of the camera, how bad the guy wants to sell it, and how bad you want to buy it, and what accessories come with it. So, if you have, you know, that's our, that's my take on it. Um, if you have a question or comment, um, send us an email.